So I believe Figma is a great tool to design and experiment and to show prototypes. But there are certain limitations when it comes to animation. And especially if you want to export those animations. There is no native support in Figma right now to export these animations. And of course, there are certain properties which you cannot animate in Figma. So to expand the scope of animation, we will be using Rive today. Rive is a tool where you can make interactive animation something like this without using a single line of code and later on we'll see how you can embed these animations into your html file and use them in your project this is going to be fairly a longer tutorial than my usual videos so stick to the end to understand the whole process and i'll try to be as elaborative as possible i will be adding a link to the Rive file, you can download it or you can remix this file. Basically, once you create your account, you can open a copy of this file and do your own experimentation. I'll add a zip file as well in the YouTube description where I'll be attaching this HTML file along with the animated icons Rive file. So let's get started. created couple of icons and you want to animate them so let's first zoom in a bit and understand the structure here and let's try to understand how not to export your assets so that you can get desired results while animating so in my case here's my icon and the first thing we need to consider is let's not export icons with any clipping mask if you see my structure here I have my icon here and I put it in a group and I am using this group as a mask and on top of that I am using a fill of dark grey color. So why I am using this structure because if I go to my icon component I have other icons as well and you can see there are multiple colors as well in some, time, in some of the icons and you may or may not have this kind of structure. So only if you're using some kind of masking inside your icons. So try not to export your icons with mask. So in our case, we'll export this component, this icon component here, where I have shapes inside it. For those of you who don't know about Rive, just go to Google and search Rive space app. It will redirect to the Rive homepage. So Rive is a tool in which you can make pretty complex animation that too with interaction inbuilt in it and the files will be pretty lightweight. So they offer both uh, web experience and desktop experience. You can either download the desktop app or you can directly get started in the browser. So I have already logged into Rive. So for me, it will directly open the Rive editor. So you can see the UI is pretty similar to the Figma and I have a file here. You might not have anything there. It might be blank. So you can just go to personal files and hit new file. So recently they have announced that you can have as many files as you want. So select new file. I'll try to walk you through along as we do things since this is a new tool and I'll try to be as elaborative as possible. So once you hit a new file, this is how you will see the UI. On the left side, we have layers and assets panel. Here they are calling it a hierarchy. And on the right side, you will see properties of the elements. And like Figma, we have design and prototype window here. Also, you have design and animate window. So just follow along and we'll go through the things one by one. So let's create our first artboard and maybe let's keep the size 48 by 48 for the icon animation. So let's move back to Figma and see how we can export our icons from Figma and import into Rive. So there are a couple of methods in which we can import assets into Rive. One is selecting your icon and right click go to copy paste and copy as SVG. Go to Rive editor and hit, let's zoom in a bit and hit command V or control V. It will start pasting your file from the clipboard. 
So once you paste it, you might not see anything here in the hierarchy. But if you go to the assets panel, here you can see it is saying paste it. So sometimes it will show you the preview of the file. But let me just show you by dragging the file onto the artboard. You can see our asset is imported successfully. Another method which I personally prefer is just export this icon. Hit export and export this icon as SVG. And let's save it on a location. Go to the arrive editor, go to the assets panel. Let me just delete it. Okay. We can just import it from the file browser. So here you can see instead of uh, pasted, I mean written pasted here, it is actually fetching the actual name of the file. So this keeps things pretty neat and you know, once you come back after some time or if you have a lot of assets here, everything will be written as pasted, pasted. So that won't make any sense. So, but if you're in hurry, you can, you know, how to do that. So let me just go back to the hierarchy window. Let's do the same thing with the rest of the icons here. Remember, need not to export the icon with any masked elements just export the pure icon here let me hit sorry let me hit export svg save it on the same location and let's do this for the third icon as well here also selecting the base icon hitting export svg so let's go to the arrival detail. Let's go to the assets panel and add the other two icons. So let's start with the first icon. We can later on do animation for these two as well. You can create their own artboards as well. Just selecting the assets, right click and say generate artboard. Let's start with this icon and let's resize the main artboard and increase things a bit 48 by 48 and let's select the chat icon as well let's log the scale constraint there and I believe it should be around 300% uh, yeah something like this so the first thing which i can share here is if you want to change this origin axis hit y on the keyboard and it will activate the move origin state and you can move it to the center i mean you can move it wherever you want according to your desired reasons expand this and we can see we have on the shapes here Another thing we need to keep in mind is while exporting icons, you need not to expand the icons. So what I mean is you need to, to convert the stroke into fins. Otherwise, the result which we are trying to achieve will not be possible. So let's start animating our icon here. So before that, let me show you a couple of properties which we will be animating. Let's select the bottom layer and see here in the strokes panel. Let's open the settings here. here something you can see trim paths if you are familiar with after effects you might already know how does it work if you don't know so select trim path and say sequential so what it means is it will allow us to animate the start and the end of the stroke so you can see this is how we achieve the effect as shown in the example and if you move the offset you can move the start and ending point of the stroke. So let's reset them to zero and let's keep it to 100, right? So these are the properties which we will be animating. So let's go to animate window here. So here you can see we have the state machines. So in state machines, basically we we'll define our logic and inputs. We we'll come back to the state machine in the later stages of the tutorial. So let's go to the timeline window here. So by default, you will see one state machine and one timeline. 
let's rename it to hour and here we'll define our animation for this icon so in the timeline we'll have a couple of uh, settings here so first thing you can do is let's reduce the fps to 30 and let's increase the duration to 3 seconds and here you can see we have couple of options here so one shot means it will run the animation only one time loop as the name suggests it will keep on looping and ping pong means it will go forward and it will go backward in the reverse direction so right now just for our reference let's keep it to loop because we'll be seeing the animation again and again just to adjust the timing and spacing properly so let's just select our first shape and go to the strokes panel here so you can see now we are seeing these keyframe icons so whatever properties are animated when you can see a keyframe icon in the animate window so all these properties are animatable wherever you see this keyframe icon so let's go to the strokes property and let's add a keyframe for the start and offset we won't be using end property here to animate we'll be using only start and offset and let's maybe go to one second and select the same properties and let's put another keyframe here so what we want is initially there won't be any stroke and in one second we have a full stroke so go to the first frame let's reduce our start point to zero let me just show you how it will behave if i go to if i keep it five percent and let's move the offset to 50 percent you can have any number based on the desired results you want you can experiment on your own so let's see how it works let's do one more thing go to this property here and let's define our work area so work area will basically limit our playhead to loop through so right now it won't go all the way to the whole timeline it will only loop through this defined work area so if we animate here as you can see right now it's looking pretty slow so we can reduce the timing here maybe let's say 20 sec uh, sorry 20 frames so we'll adjust the timing and spacing later on let's put in keyframes for all our elements now for the ellipse part let's select the ellipse and initially what we want is we want to bounce it back and forth so initially let's say there won't be any ellipses are very uh, visible let's keyframe the layer here we keyframe the opacity and let's keyframe the y-axis as well and let's say an issue the opacity will be zero and it will move up and let's make the opacity a hundred percent and it will come back something like this so let's do the same thing with the second ellipse here keep from the opacity keep from the y-axis first and last And let's move it so I selected the wrong layer let's move it up two pixels and let's keyframe the opacity here to 100 percent 
and make it zero initially. So right now, so for this star here, we'll be animating opacity, rotation, and scale property. So then let's move this keyframe to the end, and here we'll say it to be scaled at twenty percent. And let's move it in the minus 90 direction and let's reduce the opacity to 0. So let's make the stroke start point to 0 as well for our chat bubble there. So now to add a bit more variation and bit more personality to this animation. Let's start adding AZ in a laser and let's move things a bit because everything is moving at the same time. So the first thing we'll do is select the first frame here, first keyframe for the chat window and let's change this interpolation to this cubic curve. And what this will do is the animation will start slowly and gradually it will gain the speed and in the end it will gradually slow down. So let's select this handle and move it something like this. So now what will happen it will start gradually quickly finish the animation and it will take more time to finish the animation. So if you can see the difference here let me hit the play button. So by the way you can hit the spacebar to play the animation. And let's move our ellipses in the timeline here so that everything doesn't move at the same time. And select all the keyframes for the ellipses and change the interpolation to this cubic curve. And let's do the same thing for the star. Let's move the keyframes ahead and let's change it to the cubic curve. So once you're happy with the animation, there are a couple of ways you can export this animation. Let me show that. So one way is we'll go to this options panel and let's say open render queue here and we'll hit this plus button. You can select the timeline from here and we can hit this plus icon. So there are a couple of formats which you can export. One is H.264. So this will export an MP4. You can either export PNG sequence, GIF, WebM or an SVG sequence. For an SVG sequence, you will need to upgrade your account. But for the free account, you can use these formats. So I think these are pretty standard formats and they fairly work for any kind of project. And once, let's say we want to export the GIF and let's reduce the FPS to 30. And before doing that, let's go to the design mode and let's turn off the fury for the hard mode. So once you hit play, it will render a GIF for us. You can download it. And let's save it here. Let me open that and show you. You can see it's working fine. So by default, Chrome will add a background color to this for the preview purpose. By default, it won't have any trans. Uh, sorry, it won't have any background color. So if I turn it off, you can see it has exported a transparent GIF. But let's say we want to use full power of this tool and there, is a, there are better ways to use this animation. So let's jump into that. Let me close the render queue. Let's go to the animate window. And now let's try to understand what are state machines. So state machines are basically where 
you will be defining your behaviors for the interaction you can define event listeners you can define input variables and based on that you can call animations according to the user's interaction so let me just try to explain it so right now we have one state sorry one timeline which is our state so by default if i go to state machine and hit play you can say once the state machine starts so at entry it will go to the cover state because right now we have only one timeline so let's say we don't want to animate this as soon as we start or as soon as we initiate the write file we want to first keep it in a static state and once the user hovers over the icon then only we want to show the animated state so for that let's create another timeline so let me just duplicate this one and let's call it idle state so here what we need to do is we can remove all the previous keyframes select all and hit and delete and let's move them to to the starting of the timeline so go to state machine and let's drag this idle state out select this connection and hit delete and let's draw a connection from entry to idle so now you can see if i hit play our icon is in the idle state now what we want to do is as soon as the mouse hovers over the artboard it should move to the hover state so for that let's define an event listener so you can uh, you can bind different event listeners to a shape let's take a rectangle tool here hit r and let's draw a rectangle here same size of our artboard 48 by 48 let's align it cool you can turn off the rectangle here let's rename it to listener so the listener layer need not to be in the visible state it will still work for us so we can just turn it off and let's add a listener from here select the listener layer hit the plus icon here and let's rename this listener to mouse enter so what this event will do will define the properties here so point pointer enter is similar to mouse enter so what we want is on mouse enter set some kind of value to the variable and do a certain action so right now let's define a variable here let's define a variable with a boolean property and let's call it hover so by default it's false and if it's stick it's true so by default we are keeping it false so let's say on mouse enter set the hover state to true and if you want to bind more inputs to this event you can select the plus icon and you can select a desired action so right now we are using only one input here so we'll say on pointer enter set hover to true and let's add one more listener to the same listener layer and let's call it mouse out and the event type would be on pointer exit so on mouse exit let's move the hover state or oh sorry let's set the hover input to false so now let's zoom in a bit in the state machine area here and let's draw a connection from idle to hover and select this arrow here you can see we can define a condition hit plus and let's say go to the hover state only if our hover input is true and let's draw another connection from here and we'll say go back to idle state add a condition when our hover input or hover variable is false 
So let's try this out. Let's play the event. So right now it's not moving anywhere. We are only in the idle state. Once I hover over this, our hover input, you can see it set to true and we are moving to the hover animation timeline. So let's just pause for a bit and remove the loop animation to one shot. And let's go back to the state machine again. So as soon as I enter the listener layer, it will set the hover input to true and we'll move to the hover state. And once I move out the cursor, it will go back to the idle state. So this is how you basically set up a very basic interaction in Rive. And let's now try to embed this file in our HTML code. To run Rive files on your local machine, you need to convert your local machine into a local server. So there are a couple of ways to do that. One of them which I use is, I use a web development tool called MAM. Just go to Google and try searching MAM. Go to this website. So if you are on Mac, it will uh, by default give you an uh, option to download a package for Mac OS. And if you are in Windows, it will by default give you a package to download for Windows. So once you download the file, and install MAM. So the installation process is pretty simple here and it will be pretty straightforward. We need not to tweak any kind of settings here. So once you download this and install, so it will look something like this. To start the server, you need not to change any settings from it. You can just hit start here. So once the server starts, you will see a page like this. Now go to Rive Editor. And let's export this file. Go to this menu and export for a file. Now you need to save this file where you have installed your map server files. So in my case, it's in the applications folder. Go to map and in Windows as well, you will see this htdocs folder and let's rename it to icons hit save so let's just see the file size here it's only 4 kb will with all that animation now if you are a seasoned developer it will be a piece of cake for you to run this right file in html but if you are a noob like me who knows a bit of html and css so let's try to understand the process here together if we go to Rive website, you can see your whole documentation. Go to the documentation and here you can see, you know, what kind of support they give for their Rive files. In our case, we will be using the WebJS documentation. But you can see you can embed this Rive files into React, React Native, Angular and many other supported platforms. You can see a quick example here. You can even try it on your own by going to this link. And if you don't want to go through all those steps, let me just simplify the process for you here. So we can go through the whole documentation. If you are a front-end developer, it will be pretty easy for you. But if you are just starting your journey with HTML and CSS, you can go follow along with me step by step. And you can open your favorite text editor as of now, I am using Sublime. Let's create a new file here. I will open a new file and let's save it. And you need to save it in the same htdocs folder and let's call it iconmation.html. Cool. So let's put in few of the basic HTML here. Now let's add the script which we'll be needing to run the RIF file. Let's copy this. Paste it here. And let's move forward. And here you can copy this code from canvas till script. 
So everything is rendered out on a canvas through the right script file. So right now we have our canvas here. We have to define width and height. In our case, it is 48 by 48 pixel. Let's add a bit of CSS as well. Let's change our background body background to maybe gray as of now. So now to run this file on an open server, remember we have turned on our map server, go to this URL and remove after this slash and let's write our file name icon animation dot html so right now we don't have anything here and it is fetching the right file from the example code so let's update this one now here there are a bunch of parameters which we need to update so instead of source instead of using this drive file from the cdn let's rename it to our exported file which was icon animation dot right so let's copy this name and paste it here and let's make the state machines too here they have given bumpy name but in our case our state machine name is state machine one so let's copy this save it and Let's hit refresh. I think we have embedded the wrong file here. It should be icons.right. That was the previous one which I used for the example. Now if we hit refresh. So in our case you can see it's loading the second artboard. Because this was the first artboard which we made. This was the last artboard. So let's change few of the parameters here we can hit enter after the state machine and let's say hardboard and in our case the artboard name is ai chat let's copy the name and I paste it here so if you go to the documentation of rai you can see here there are numerous parameters which you can pass and change things accordingly. So I am keeping things pretty simple here just for our understanding. So we are passing artboard video, uh, sorry, artboard para parameter here where we are saying that load the artboard AI chat. So let's save and hit refresh here. Now you can see our artboard is loaded. Pretty neat, right? So let's quickly add other animations as well. So let's go to this artboard and let's call it Explore. And let's go to the design window and scale it 300%. And move it to the center. And let's go to the animate window and do the same thing. I can let's select everything in one go and go to the stroke window and add sequential you can basically experiment with sequential and synced so sequential mean if we have multiple paths like in this case here we have multiple paths so let me show you what I mean if I do sequential, it will first fill the first path and then the second path. But if we do synced, both the paths will be filled at the same time. So you can experiment with the properties, whatever suits to your needs. Let's reduce the FPS to 30. And increase our timeline. Let's select offset. 
zero and let's row maybe to one second and say offset 100% and start to 100% so if we see the animation here I think somehow it has not added the keyframe for the rest of the three so let's go back there I'm sorry start to zero Nice. Let's define the work area. Then reduce this. We can do one more thing. Select these shapes and let's change our cap to round. Let's select all the keyframes and give them ease in, ease out. And again, let's move things a bit so that everything doesn't move at the same pace. Nice. Let's turn off the so remember one more thing if you do anything here if you make any changes here in the animate window it might add a keyframe so you might be thinking that i have turned off the fill in animate mode but in your design window i'm again seeing the fill that could be because you have turned off the layer so whatever changes you want to make or you want to do a permanent change go to the design window so right now i've turned it off and let's duplicate this one let's rename it to idle let's delete initial frames keep only the final frames move everything to starting of the frame even if you don't align the keyframes it won't matter i'm just keeping it for my sanity so let's go to the state machine here. Let's revise the process here. Draw a rectangle. Make it same size of your artboard. Let's turn it off. Remember, we don't need the listener layer to be visible. It will still work. Go to the animate mode in state machine. Let's add a listener, call it mouse up, sorry, mouse enter. Let's again define a boolean here, hover, keep it false by default, on mouse enter, make hover true, so let's add more to this, one more listener, pointer exit make hover to false and let's rename it to mouse leap so let's say if you want to replace this hover state select this hold option or alt click and drag the desired timeline and drop it on top of it so it will replace the timeline here now Let's add a hover state here. Hover timeline, sorry. And let's draw a connection. And let's add the condition here. Hover should be true. And move back to idle if our hover input is false. So let's see. So it's working fine. So let's update our file. Let's export again. Export for runtime. And I believe we were saying it icons.ry. Yes. Now let's move to our HTML file and let's make a copy of this canvas and let's call it canvas2 and let's 
copy this code paste it and let's rename this to r2 basically you can give any name to this variable let's use r2 and here we'll say that get the element by id and here update it to canvas2 because this is what we are given here and now let's change the art word here from ai chat to explore remember here we are given explore so let's save it and hit refresh so i hope you have got the basics of this so similarly you can add more artboards there and in the html file you will be defining multiple canvases based on the artboards you want to show and update these parameters in your file according to the desired result so for the this is not how you run in the actual web development pipeline things would be pretty neater here you will be defining a separate css file and separate javascript file i am doing this just to show a demo here and if you are very keen to test out your animations file this is a quick and dirty way to do that so i hope this was helpful for you and you might have learned a thing or two and you will be able to test out your animations fairly quickly so if you have any doubts go to the documentation or do write something in the comments i'll try to solve it as per my abilities thanks again see you in the next one